Good morning, and thank you for attending this very special day for children and their parents. My name is Patty Kilgallen, and I am the CEO of the Children's Cottage Society. First, I'd like to welcome His Worship Nehed Menchi, Mayor of the City of Calgary, as well as the Honorable Rebecca Schultz, Minister of Children's Services. We're really grateful for you to spend some time with us today and, and to say a few words. Thank you for attending. Our agenda today will walk you through why it has become urgent to increase crisis nursery capacity. A crisis nursery is a place where children may sleep over when parents have nowhere else to turn and they're realizing that they're not able to care for their children. They want to keep them safe. We hope that you will be inspired today to care together with colleagues, friends and neighbors so that children will never again be turned away. 1900 children turned away is a crisis that needs a solution. And today we launch opportunities to care together so that new doors may open to strengthen families and provide hope for children. I would like to introduce you to Vicki Reed, who is the president of the board of directors of the Children's Cottage and has worked on this project for the last nine years. Thanks, Patty, and good morning, everyone. I'm so glad that you could all join us on this very, very special day at the Children's Cottage. It is with such a heavy heart that this morning I would like to take a moment to recognize all the children lost to our Indigenous friends and lost to our country due to the atrocities, the residential school system, and the 60s scoop. In the spirit of reconciliation, we promise to work with you to help to keep your children in your homes and with your families. Every child deserves to be cared for and loved. Every child matters. Also in the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge that we are so grateful to live on this beautiful land where we live, work and play in the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, Siksika, Kainai, Pakani, the Sutina and Nakod Stony Nakoda nations and Métis Region 3, and all the people who make their homes on Treaty 7 Region of Southern Alberta. We are so pleased to announce today that the Children's Cottage has purchased land in the Northwest community of Montgomery to build a new child and family center. More than a year ago, through a pipe ceremony, the land was blessed by elders. And today we are announcing that 1804 Home Road will become the location of the new Child and Family Center, where we will help more vulnerable children who are in desperate need. The new location is directly east of Safeway on the Trans-Canada Highway as you travel west as you're leaving Calgary. A, a crisis nursery is needed so that children have a buffer to reduce their exposure to stress. Without this, research tells us there's a significant impact on brain development. It is such a sign of strength when parents reach out for help so they can protect their children and make sure that nothing bad befalls them, that they could have them removed from their homes. Each year, with help, we help many children and keep them safe. Over the past 10 years, we are so proud that we have helped 12,912 children and they came through our doors and we helped them. But sadly in those same 10 years, 17,527 children could not be helped. And in a city like Calgary, a province like Alberta, a country like Canada, that is just not okay. And that's what keeps us up at night. Imagine calling for help in your darkest hour as a parent and being told there is no room. What should you do now? The Children's Cottage sees too many children turned away during stressful and desperate times. In 2018 and 2019, lack of space forced us to turn away just over 1,900 children. Without more crisis nursery beds, 1,900 children and their families remained in crisis, likely causing lifelong problems like family separation, developmental delays, depression, and much more. 
but we are thrilled that we have a solution. And we're announcing that today. We are launching a time and an opportunity where people can give to support the 1900 children. And we ask for your help to build a new child and family center to help 20 more children each day and bring agencies together under one roof to ensure that parents are supported immediately. Imagine being able to help more than 8,000 more children each year and not turn them away. The Children's Cottage is pleased to unveil to you today the new child and family center, and this is what it will look like. We think it is a welcoming, beautiful building, kind of like home. The center is three stories high and 35,000 square feet. The first floor will house the Calgary West Family Resource, family resource Network and a therapeutic child development program. And we have a special place for elders and for children to gather for ceremonies. The second floor of the crisis nursery has room for 20 children. Comfortable, cozy bedrooms, sensory rooms, playrooms, and games rooms will help children have a positive, impactful, and safe stay. We are also able to announce today that we will increase the age limit to include nine-year-olds, which has been a community need that has left this age group very vulnerable. The third floor will have dedicated space for mental health support. Housing programs for families and home visiting programs will be located there as well. And volunteers are the backbone of the Children's Cottage Society and are so needed to care for the children and to support our many programs. After 34 years of no volunteer space to hang your hat or to talk about a difficult time with a child, we will have a special place for you are very special volunteers. So we are proud now to present the Caring Together campaign video for the very first, first time. And I warn you, this is gonna grab your heart. Since 1986, Children's Cottage has been here, helping vulnerable children and their families when they need it most. As Calgary's only crisis nursery, we support children newborn to age eight. They stay overnight with us in a safe, compassionate environment while their parents deal with a crisis in their lives. Annually, we help over 1,000 children and their families with prevention and support programs to buffer them from trauma and breakdown of their family. Unfortunately, we turn away twice the number of children we need to help. Without support, 1,900 children and their families remain in crisis, causing lifelong problems like family separation, developmental delays, depression, and much more. Children suffer when their parents are stressed and exhausted. Too often, our doors are closed to children when their parents are ill. Far too many times, parents go without help when their child's safety is at risk. We can't help overwhelmed parents who are unable to care for their children. An answer to the great need at our crisis nursery is within reach. We're building a new child and family center to care for 20 more children each day. Imagine the potential. Your generous gift of $19, $190, $1900, dollars $19,000, $190,000, or whatever you can give to our Caring Together campaign will more than double our resources to provide urgent support for children and families in crisis. Open the door for the 1900 children. Make your gift to the Children's Cottage Caring Together campaign today. I am pleased to welcome His Worship Nehed Nenshi, Mayor of Calgary today. Mayor Nenshi was sworn in as the 36th Mayor of Calgary in 2010 and was reelected in 2013 and again in 2017. 
Before entering City Hall, he worked with the Government of Alberta, the United Nations, and became Canada's first tenured professor in the field nonprofit management at Mount Royal University. For the past 11 years, he has been an advocate for children and families in Calgary and has recognized their needs as we have gone through this journey of finding land, buying land, checking off boxes. Today, we are so pleased that he is able to attend the announcement of this much needed center. Welcome your worship, Mayor Nenshi. Well, thank you very much, Patty, and thank you to everyone involved in the Children's Cottage on what I hope is a really historic day for children and families in our community. It is a big day and it is an important day. You know, a lot of people don't know that before I became mayor, my volunteer work was really focused in the area of early childhood development. And we knew then, all those years ago, about the importance of brain development for kids uh, uh, as it related to their success in life. However, more recently, uh, we have uh, just passed probably the single most important thing I've done in my political life, which is Calgary's new community-based action plan on mental health and addiction, a community of connections. And through that work, we learned even more about how adverse childhood events can really impact people's mental health throughout their lives. And so the work that the Children's Cottage does in managing emergencies, in difficult moments in the lives of parents and children, of creating that place of safety, of security, and of belonging, we understand is even more critical than we probably knew when the Children's Cottage first started. And in a week of heartbreaking news about children, in a week where we were reminded, and some of us perhaps learned for the first time, about the horrors inflicted on children and their families by the Indian residential school system. Those 215 souls represent probably up to 6,000 or more children whose lives were lost in the residential school system. And I think every single parent hugged their kid just a little bit tighter this week and thought hard about what that means for us and to us as a society. But rather than be sad and reflective about it. Let us channel all of those emotions into real change and real work. And that means looking across the entire system. It looks at prevention, it looks at emergency response, it looks at building resiliency in children, families, and communities. But it also means that we've got to be there at the moment we're needed. There has to be someone on the other end of the line, whereas Vicky says, people are calling on the worst day of their life. On the worst day of their life and on the best day of their life, people need to know that they live in a community that cares about them, in a community that looks after them, in a community that wants to help. And that's precisely what the Children's Cottage does every day. So I've been lucky to know Patty and the Children's Cottage for many years since I was teaching nonprofit management. And I've always known that our capacity to help does not match the demand. But I didn't know until much more recently, but that's 2,000 kids, 1,900 kids who we have not been able to help every year. And so this campaign and this project is so critical for us to be able to meet that need as the city grows. And particularly for us to be able to meet that need for vulnerable people, because none of us know when our family is going to be vulnerable. So I just wanna say thank you today to Patty and her dedicated team, people who have dedicated their lives to helping children at risk. I want to say thank you to Vicki and her board and all the volunteers who work with the Children's Cottage. But mostly I want to say thank you to those of you who are watching, who are donors, who are supporters, who believe in this work and encourage everyone to join this campaign and to join this work. You know, you may think that you have a stable family you've got lots of family and friends and work supports, that you yourself are not vulnerable. But what we have really learned, especially in this terrible year of this pandemic, is that in the blink of an eye, things that we're comfortable with can be taken away. In the blink of an eye, we've got to find our own resilience. And indeed, all of us are vulnerable, but all of us live in a community where we look after one another. And I, for one, am deeply grateful to live in a community with the Children's Cottage in it. 
I'm deeply grateful to live in a community with people like Patty in it, who dedicate their lives to making sure that everyone else's path is just a little bit easier. So today I'm grateful, and I ask that you join me in that gratitude and that you help express that gratitude by sending some money. Thanks, Patty. Thank you, Mayor Nancy, for those inspiring and really heartfelt words. Um, it uh, really reminds us about how important mental health is, how important it is that when somebody calls and reaches out for help, that there's an immediate response. And the mental health component that you have just brought forward in this uh, city is um, enormous and, uh, and Children's Cottage will be able to support more families in a more meaningful way with our partner agencies because of it. So thank you for those words and uh, for being here today. It is now my pleasure to welcome the Honorable Rebecca Schultz, Minister of Children's Services. Minister Schultz was elected to the Alberta Legislative Assembly as the MLA for Calgary Shaw and appointed as Minister of Children's Services in April 2019. She is a communications professional with a master's degree from John Hopkins University, and most important, a mother to two young children of her own. She has shown a passion for early intervention strategies that help Alberta children stay in their homes while their parents get the support they need. Minister Schultz works hard to make sure all children in Alberta have what they need to grow up to be happy, healthy, and safe. She is a tremendous supporter of Children's Cottage, and we're so happy that you are here today. Welcome, Minister Schultz. Thank you so much, Patty, and, and thank you, Vicki, for, for your words at the beginning. I know this has been a very difficult week for many across the country. Uh, and a very real reminder of why it is so important to make sure that every child has what they need um, and that we're working as hard as we can to keep kids connected to their families, to their culture, um, and really supporting them at vulnerable times. And, and, and that's why I'm so grateful for uh, how you started off today's event. And I know we all know that the last year has been very difficult for all of us, uh, not just in Alberta, but especially for those who are most vulnerable. Um, family resource networks like yours have just done such an incredible job at, even though things look very different, you have stepped up uh, and found innovative ways to reach out to families, to support families and kids who need it. Um, and, and I know your leadership, your board, your team, and your volunteers, uh, you do this all the time. You have incredible passion for what you do, but I just want to recognize how difficult the last year uh, really had been also for agencies like yours, for organizations like yours, uh, the challenges that you faced, and just how you rose above it to continue to support kids and families uh, in need uh, with such grace and passion, uh, it's really truly remarkable. And so I, I am very grateful to be here uh, today. I still think back uh, when I was thinking about uh, joining you today, I was thinking back to the first time I visited Children's Cottage. And, uh, you know, it, it was an exceptional opportunity to meet with your leadership team, your board, um, and see that passion that you bring uh, to the work that you do, whether it is short term respite. Uh, for a parent who just needs some help, a break, a safe space for their child or caring for kids who, who aren't safe at home. Uh, you know, from home visits to parenting support, you just step up, do whatever's needed, and you make such a real difference in the lives of these children and families. And I do, I do visit a lot of community organizations um, in, in my work, and I can tell you that it's really not every day that I go home and you know, I, I started packing up things of my children's that I could bring and um, trying to think of other ways that I can help. And so days like today, I know I can help. I am happy to help um, because I think it's also never been more important for us to align and to work towards our common goals of protecting children, youth and families. And, and you have uh, over the last number of years been a valued partner uh, of the government of children's services in this work, providing a range of prevention, early intervention, crisis supports to children and families in need. And that's, you know, when we look at our prevention and early intervention work uh, at the provincial level and the, the, I think it's nearly $60 million we invest a year in this work. Um, you know, I, I know we spoke about how important you are to that network, that we uh, had to make some changes. We have to make sure that all kids and families, no matter where they live, no matter what their situation, that they have access to high quality supports and services that 
are based in you know, best practice leading, leading um, research. It's not about the research, but it's making sure that our focus is on the well-being and resiliency of kids and families and using every single tool that we know and every single thing that we know about how we can best serve kids. Um, and that's why there was no question that you would be a part of this work and why I'm also so excited that your space will be home to the Calgary West Family Resource Network, uh, which will continue to provide home visitation, counseling, and child uh, and family development programming for kids in Calgary who need it. So it, it, it really is no secret that this has been a difficult year. It's been a difficult economic time. Uh, and seeing the passion and dedication of your staff um, and all partner organizations and, and really our community and specifically our city here in Calgary to make this project a reality is so incredibly inspiring. So I do know that together we can make sure every child has a place to stay, a place to grow, a place where they can feel and be supported. And my ministry will continue to work uh, with you on that we want to make sure that kids are not only safe, but they have everything they need to reach their highest potential. And so um, I'm grateful again to be here today with our shared goal to come together for this very important work and just tell you um, how impressed I, I have been by your passion and dedication and how happy I am to be here uh, in support of all you do. Wow, Minister Schultz, that... Uh... That is so inspiring and it means the world to Children's Cottage to hear those words from you today. Um, when I, I, I agree with you in terms of Vicki's words um, and how she opened it today and thinking about all of our Indigenous um, families and, and, and elders and people that are so worried about children that won't be able to stay in their parents' homes. And we are so uh, dedicated to making sure that we are there for them and that what has happened in the past does not need to happen again. And there's no excuse for it. And, and so we've been working actively to connect with those elders and connect with those communities to make sure that um, as we open, that we've been thinking about them and thinking about what they need and that they're telling us what they need. So as we open this new building and have um, space for elders to be and, and a ceremonial room, that when even when somebody comes from the Stony Nakoda Nation into Calgary, that we're going to be able to say, if you need to smudge today, if that's going to help you in your day, stop by, and that we're going to have a really open facility. And when you were talking about our family resource network, all of our uh, partner agencies that are working with us, like Families Matter and, and uh, Calgary Reads, and, and we have uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and Hull, and Calgary Counseling Center and Calgary Catholic Family Services, all of those agencies and more will be coming together so that when we are open, that it is a one-stop shop that we don't have to make it complicated for people to get help. So thank you for mentioning that today and being here. And uh, it's, we, we are so grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mayor Nenshi and Minister Schultz. Mayor, you have been with us every step of the way for many, many years and with our land um, dedication last year. And I know you're gonna be with us every step of the way in the future. Thank you so much. Minister Schultz, I remember the first time you came to the children's cottage and how engaged you were and how much you understood the need of the children and how you wanted to roll your hands up. And as you have progressed in, in your portfolio, you know, we see you in the news all the time making such a difference for vulnerable families and, and for children. And we are so, so fortunate to have you as our minister. So thank you so much for, for being here today. We believe that it's very easy for everyone to agree that helping, children, helping more children is important. And to achieve this, there are many steps. And with the help of target project management, we have moved very close to checking off many of those projects. It's exciting. The land is ready. So hurry and partners have the architectural drawings in hand. Permits are approved. Consultation with our staff and with elders and parents from the Stony Nakoda Nation have been invaluable. We have one more important job to do. It will take $23 million to make this happen for children. But for today, 
we are taking steps to raise money for the construction to happen. For land and construction, it will cost $18 million. Right now, I would like to introduce our good friends and supporters from the Calgary Flames Foundation, Synovus, and Shaganap BGM, who are all making donations in the spirit of caring together to help 1,900 children. Hello, my name is Rob Miller and welcome to Shag and Appy GM. We've always been huge advocates of our community and this year, more than ever, we wanted to continue that tradition. As a family owned dealership, it has always been important for us to support our local Northwest families. Through the Children's Cottage Caring Together campaign, we were able to achieve that goal. Through a partnership with our customers, we were able to raise $12,700 for the new Montgomery Crisis Center, which is more than double our initial goal. Ultimately, we want to say thank you for all of those who joined us in caring together for the Children's Cottage. Hello, my name is Jessica Yarnell and I am a Senior Community Programs Advisor at Synovus Energy. We have been a proud Circle of Hope supporter of the Children's Cottage since 2010. To us, the Children's Cottage provides a safe space where individuals can get the support that they deserve to build strong and resilient families in our community. At Synovus, we believe that everyone has the right to the supports and services that help them thrive. That's why we are so excited to announce a donation in the amount of $100,000 to help the Children's Cottage ensure that no family is turned away and has the access to the programs that they deserve. Keep up the amazing work, Children's Cottage. We are so proud to call you a partner. I'm Candice Gowdy from the Calgary Flames Foundation and the Calgary Sports and Entertainment Corporation. Uh, and we are really, really excited to be a part of this new beginning and exciting step for the Children's Cottage Society, um, who are doing such incredible work to serve children who are, are vulnerable and at risk. And this new facility is a game changer um, for this city, and we are so proud to be a part of it. And uh, let's get going on this, Calgary. We're, we're excited and we hope that you are as well. Candice, I, I so agree with you. This is such a game changer. I'm gonna use that word as, as we move forward with this campaign. Thank you so much to these incredibly special donors and to many more who have made it possible to make another announcement today. An incredible 11.1 million has been raised to date. By the end of December and with the help of Calgarians, we need to raise another 7 million. When we raise the target of $18 million, we will be able to come together for the groundbreaking celebration in March of 2022, and then the construction will begin. I might be doing cartwheels across our land in Montgomery that day. Raising 7 million is a challenge though, and we are ready to work and roll our sleeves up to make this happen. Every donor will be recognized. Some may give over a five-year plan and we'll be able to name a room, or a floor, or even the building. One wonderful anonymous donor has already agreed to match don each donation up to 1.75 million, something that is so generous and will double the donations of so many. Can't tell you how grateful we are. So we hope that you will help us help 1900 children and become a part of our Caring Together campaign. Please let us know of opportunities and to help us open doors. Introduce us to your friends and your family. Please spread the word. Create your own Caring Together campaign to raise funds and raise awareness of the need to help children. In honor of 1,900 children who need help, please consider donating $190, $1,900, $19,000, $100,000, $5,000, whatever you can spare. Every single donation makes a difference for kids. When parents used our crisis nursery, they shared deep feelings. One mom said, I'm feeling trapped and overwhelmed. I'm losing my patience. I'm afraid for my children. Please help me. Today, I'd like to introduce you to another parent. We recently met and she, when she needed the crisis nursery. She honored us with her time, even though she's a very busy parent of seven children, including infant twins. 
I have seven kids. Um, they are lovely kids. They are amazing. They are like, they mean everything to me. Um, my kids are um, what makes me go on, you know, keep going. Um, when I was having my son Clyde, I called my father and he came and um, unfortunately my eldest son was the one taking care of everybody. <laughs> so um, so that, that made me take a decision to call Children's Cottage because um, uh, like, I didn't want to depend on him because he, would not, he was not able to do what I need him to do. So when I, when I was desperate, I called. I was so shocked I got in because I know there's a lot of people that need um, that are high priority, but my situation was very important. And when the lady said yes, I felt at peace. You know, they, they called, I brought the kids, and they kept the kids for over a week for me. That was a blessing. During that time, I gave birth to my twins. While I was in, um, I guess, recovery, where they put you when you, after you have the baby, uh, my daughter was preemie, so I had to stay a little extra. So I called Children's Cottage again and said, can you please, like, keep them please and she said yes <laughs> so I was like oh my god this is great what do you think it would have been like if every time you call yeah we say we're full yeah. and we can't help you today what do you think that would have done um I would be very worried um because I would be by myself because I needed my at the time my part I needed my partner to be with me while I'm giving birth right so um, um, it would have been devastating, to be honest, you know, because I needed someone. And, and you know, the, the kids are younger, so one of them needs their, their, their diapers to be changed and fed and, and, and brush their teeth. So everything is very important. I like my kids being taken care of. I would say um, support Children's Cottage 100% because they're, I'm so sorry, I'm just getting so emotional because the time when I needed help and it was amazing so like do whatever you can for Children's Cottage because I'm so sorry do whatever you can I don't care how much it costs they are doing something for the community and it's something that no one can um, no one can comprehend but I understand how it feels um, honestly it's a blessing Children's Cottage is literally heaven <laughs> for children so it's, it's made out of love and I think that's something that you that's priceless you know it's it's a, like I said it's a blessing it's a great opportunity and it helped me during the time when I really needed someone I was desperate so very grateful so Thank you so much to this very brave mom. She's just one example of a mom who needed some help and reached out and, and, um, and what would have happened to her other children when she's in the hospital? You just uh, don't want to think about it. And, you know, we have had experiences over the years where we hear of parents just leaving their children alone at home. And we never want to see that because we know the outcomes of that is something really, really terrible. And, um, and we just can't have that happen to children and families. So today we're wrapping things up now. I'd like to thank um, all of the participants, uh, the mayor, um, Minister Schultz. I would like to thank Vicki for uh, chairing this today and, and being able to, um, uh, to talk about our new project. Um, I'd like to extend a special thank you to all of you who came today and gave us some of your time we appreciate that you are here and we are looking forward to raising that extra 7 million. And then next spring, when construction begin to all come together for that groundbreaking. So that will be a momentous day. Anyone from the media who is here today, uh, Vicki and I will certainly stay on afterwards to field any of your questions. And to everyone else, um, please have a wonderful day and talk to everyone that you meet about the Caring Together campaign and how everybody can do just a little bit uh, to make this happen. Thank you again and thanks for joining us.